the Red Army, which is battling against a tremendous invasion. The threat of nuclear war between nations is less likely than ever before. The Cold War, mutually assured destruction, and duck and cover exercises are terms for the history books, not the daily news. Today, however, we are left with the dangerous legacy of our past. Thousands of nuclear warheads remain, as well as tons of radioactive materials that could fall into the wrong hands. The world's nations are now left to manage that risk. The reality is that there are different kinds of nuclear material in different forms in hundreds of buildings in dozens of countries all around the world. If that material is in a location that uh, is vulnerable to either theft or diversion or some other form of proliferation concern, then that's what we consider to be a, uh, a vulnerable nuclear material. If we only look at the most vulnerable material, the highly enriched uranium, um, information from open sources and also supplemented with information from the IAEA mm -hmm. indicates that the order of the um, volume of these materials is 1,900 metric tons of HEU. And that is a lot of material. This is only the top of the iceberg. The effort to scoop up and lock down nuclear materials has become one of the world's greatest security challenges. It began in earnest following the collapse of the Soviet Union, a program created by the Nunn Luger Act and known as Cooperative Threat Reduction, helped secure materials in former Soviet republics in the early 1990s. This work took on new urgency in the aftermath of the September 11th attacks. President Bush succeeded in getting the UN Security Council to approve Resolution 1540, which requires all nations to prevent the spread of weapons of mass destruction. Today, President Obama has made securing nuclear materials a top policy priority and has called for a summit of world leaders on the issue. So today I am announcing a new international effort to secure all vulnerable nuclear material around the world within four years. We will set new standards, expand our cooperation with Russia, pursue new partnerships to lock down these sensitive materials. We must also build on our efforts to break up black markets, detect and intercept materials in transit, and use financial tools to disrupt this dangerous trade. Despite progress, the effort to secure nuclear materials is far from complete. Like many 21st century challenges, it requires some political will at home and cooperation around the world. I think it's going to require um, sustained leadership coming from President Obama himself and others in the White House. The reality is that many countries around the world today are not convinced that nuclear terrorism is a realistic threat. They're not convinced if it is a threat that it's a threat to them. And they're not convinced if it is a threat and it's a threat to them that anything that they do is going to make much difference in that threat. And we have to overcome all of those levels of complacency if we're really going to see the kind of action that we need. And that's going to require many different levels of diplomatic and other intervention to try to build this case uh, for action.